Welcome to part 13 in this series of videos on how to create a simple purchase order system using Blazor and C Sharp. At present, uh, we're saving the purchase order header to the SQL database, but we're not saving the purchase order lines. In this video, we're going to look at this particular topic. Let's have a look at the code and we'll start off with SQL. To link purchase order lines to the relevant purchase order header, the purchase order line table has a column called PO line header. Perhaps we should have a look at that. So on the header, we've got an identity column PO header ID. That's, as I say, an identity column, and that will get incremented by one every time a new record is added to this particular table. On the PO line table, we have PO line header ID. And whenever we enter a whole order, the header is added first and the ID of the header is going to be inserted into this record here, or into this uh, field here, to form a link between the header and the lines. So that's the, the theory. So we're going to start by looking at the stored procedure uh, for when we insert a purchase order line. And we're going to be using uh, a, one of the features of SQL in that as well as passing in input parameters, it can also output parameters. Uh, and we're going to be uh, adding uh, an output parameter here, and it's going to be set to the ID of the record that's being inserted. But before I do that, I just want a little bit of housekeeping. We've got P header is archived here uh, and we don't really need that. Um, whenever a record is added to the database uh, by definition that's going to be set to zero so we don't need to duplicate effort on that. So I'm just going to remove that from the parameters being passed in and the fields to be updated. And we've got some squigglies here. Uh, that's because I think we've got this comma after here. But this is where we're going to input or enter uh, the parameter for the thing, the, the header ID that we want returned uh, by the stored procedure. And I'm going to call it output for no other reason that that's what it's going to be. We could have anything here. It's going to be an integer because that's what the header ID is going to be. And this is the important bit. We put output here. And that defines that that parameter is an output parameter as opposed to an input parameter. The next stage is we've got to set the value of that output. Uh, and we can do that by typing in set at output. equals scope identity. And what this is doing, as I say, is setting the output uh, to be the identity, the ID of the record that's just been inserted. And the reason we put scope in front of identity, scope underscore, is that that ensures that it's only going to get the ID, the identity of the record that's added by this particular stored procedure. If another user is adding another record to the PO header and for some reason that gets added before we get the scope, uh, sorry, before we get the identity, we could potentially get the wrong one. So scope limits it to this particular, we'll get the ID that's input by this particular stored procedure. Uh, 
So that's all we need to do on the SQL side of things. So I'll execute that. Uh, so that's changed, that's modified the uh, insert. Because we've changed the uh, stored procedure here, uh, we need to make some changes into in C sharp. And we'll start off with the PO header service. And this is what we've got at the moment. We've got a public async task of type Boolean and it's doing a PO header insert and it's passing in the whole uh, purchase PO header object. We need to change this um, and I'm going to comment that out. And actually bring in the code that we need. You'll notice, well, let's, I'll bring it in and then we discuss the differences. So it's now a public async task of type integer, and the PO header insert, we're passing in the parameters that our stored procedure is calling for. Um, in here, we had our header, PO header is archived. We haven't got that any longer. I'm then uh, declaring a new variable called new header ID. Uh, it's a type integer and I'm setting it to zero. The name of this is irrelevant. We could call it whatever we want. But then we have the actual uh, parameters being passed in and we've then got the parameter output and the important thing there is the direction is output. Then when we execute the stored procedure, um, it will return the output ID. So the new header ID I'm setting to get, the parameters.get, type integer, and the name of it. So that's output. And then it's going to be returning output to uh, the, our calling method. So that's the, the, the main changes on the PO header service. I'll save that. Uh, because we've changed that, we now also need to change IPO header services, the interface. Um, that's what we've got at the moment. And again, in the interest of time, I'm going to delete that and replace it entirely. And again, Again, the only change, although it looks quite voluminous, is to change the PO header insert from a Boolean to an integer, and then I'm specifying the fields that are being passed in. So let's save that. So that's dealt with the SQL side of things and the uh, PO header service, the, the header insert. So now that's going to be, as part of the insert, it's going to be returning the ID of the record that has just been entered. So now we can look at the actual purchase order page itself. And the first thing we're going to have to do is, where shall I put it? I'll put it under PO header service. We now need to inject the uh, IPO line service because we're going to be inserting uh, purchase order lines. The actual service for that hasn't changed and neither has the, the interface, uh, but we need do need to inject it here. So I'll just grab that, inject it. So at sign, inject, IPO line service, PO line service. Next, we need to have a look at the order save. And here's the method for uh, order save and at the moment it's using our old boolean uh, where we passed in the whole uh, object. I'm going to get rid of that, comment that out and change that for this. So I'm declaring an integer called header ID and that is then going to await the PO header insert. And this is the this is the list of fields that have been passed in. And as part of that, 
Um, when that is successfully uh, completed, uh, it will return that output uh, ID that we had from the stored procedure and I'm calling it header ID. Again, I could call that anything we want. If we were to save and run the software at this point, uh, we'd still be able to enter the purchase order header as we did previously. Um, basically no change and nothing much would happen to this. The next bit is the interesting bit. I've got a, a for each loop and this is going to cycle around all the uh, order lines and uh, I'm declaring it as a variable individual PO line. So for each individual PO line in the order lines collection, it's going to, first of all, uh, set the PO line header ID to the newly retrieved header ID here. So that's what we're doing is the, the header insert has taken place and it's returned the ID of that particular record. And we're now setting uh, the PO line header ID to that particular uh, value. We're then going to run uh, the, I say ordinary PO line service in PO line insert. Um, that was straight off the original uh, data code generator, sorry, the code generator from Alan Simpson. Um, and it's going to return a Boolean called success. Right, okay, I'll save everything and we'll run it. And then I'll explain why this isn't actually a very good idea. But let's run it first and I'll explain later. Right, so this is the purchase order list. Uh, I've cleared out the data so there are no records in purchase order header or purchase order line tables. So let's add a purchase order. And I select a supplier. It hasn't assigned the order number yet uh, and it's being requested by me. I've actually signed in. So now we'll add some lines. In fact, I'll add a couple of lines. So here we are, we've got the order header and the order lines, we've got one header with today's date, the 9th of March, and two lines um, for A4, 10, and DL252. So let's save it. And it's saved. Uh, it's order number one with today's date. So I'll close that and have a, we'll have a look in SQL. And in SQL, if we look at the tables, PO header, we've got one, and the PO header ID is seven. Let's have a look at the PO lines. And we've got the two lines, uh, and it's got the P PO line header. ID is seven, so that cross references nicely with the PO header file, and we've got our two products there. So that all looks very good. Right, let me close that, go back to the code. Right, now, why isn't this a very good idea? This is actually very bad practice, uh, but for our purposes at this stage, uh, I'll accept it. The reason it's bad practice is that what could happen is that this section of code could run and we could enter the purchase header record 
and for one reason or another, maybe a, f a failure at this point or during one of these cycles around the for each loop, uh, an error occurs. And what we end up with in that case is incomplete data. So we might have a purchase order header with no rows or insufficient number of rows. Uh, it's not good. And the way that that should be tackled is to enclose the whole process either in C sharp or in SQL in a single transaction. And the idea behind that is that either it all runs or it all fails. Um, so we start off by saying begin transaction up here and uh, if no errors are found it'll then commit the transaction or if errors are discovered uh, or an error is thrown then the whole transaction is rolled back and the reason uh, I'm not doing all that is because to be honest I've had a look at uh, some examples and it doesn't seem fairly straightforward. Um, I'm putting it on my list of things to investigate and maybe we'll come back to it later uh, but at this stage uh, for purely pragmatic reasons uh, I'm doing this the not very good way. So that's where we've got to today. Um, if I swiftly run it again The next stage is to tidy this up. Uh, at the moment, all we've got is the order number and the order date. Um, I think it would be good if we had on here the supplier and possibly the net total or gross total of the order uh, and possibly even who, who requested the uh, purchase order. Uh, but that's for next time. Um, so thank you very much for watching. If anyone's got any ideas of uh, suitable tutorials to show me how to do the transaction as a single or the posting as a single transaction with the ability to roll back I'd be very grateful if they could uh, put it put a link in the comments if you've got any other comments please enter them in the comments section and as usual I'll put the code for this uh, video uh, on the blazer code website and I'll put a link to that in the uh, description. So thank you very much and we'll I look forward to getting the next video for ready for you shortly. Thank you.